Hi everybody, it's Sandy Boucher. Once again, it's Sunday, so welcome back to Sunday with Sandy. Uh, once again, I just wanted to share some information with you today, and actually today we're going to be talking about video games, because I don't know what it's like where you live, but I live in northern Ontario, and it's snowing out today, doesn't look that appealing, and I'd be willing to bet that some people on this family day weekend are enjoying themselves playing some video games. Now, older generations love to slam the activities of the younger generation. I know my mother totally used to come down on whatever we were getting up to as teenagers, and I hear a lot of flack from people talking about video games and how it's just a waste of time for our youth and it's ruining their communication skills and setting them up to fail. And I'm actually going to prove all of that wrong today. So if you know a parent of a teenager, please share this video with them. Or if you know a teenager who likes playing video games, then you should definitely share this video with them as well. So before I get into that, just a little bit of an idea of who I am. My name is Sandy Boucher. I work as an indigenous motivational speaker, an activist, and I'm a published author. I work in three key areas. So the first is indigenous inclusion. And that means I work with non-Indigenous agencies, businesses, communities, and I've developed an Indigenous engagement assessment tool. So I look at their policies and procedures, and I even talk to their customer base to make sure to identify, to help them identify the barriers that may exist that they didn't even realize existed and it's really preventing that engagement with their indigenous customers or clients. The second area is the indigenous empowerment and that's me out in the communities helping other indigenous people. I'm Ojibwe, I'm from Seine River First Nation, but I help indigenous people across Canada overcome the legacy of the schools, of the oppression and the internalized oppression that we've been carrying for far too long. And last, I work in the area of engagement, where the two sides, non-Indigenous and Indigenous, are now trying to work together. You may hear reconciliation being thrown around. Well, there's a lot of steps that we have to go through together before we can get to reconciliation. And that's what that engagement piece is all about. So that's who I am. That's the expertise I bring to this video. The reality is a lot of people don't realize that before I became a motivational speaker, I actually worked in employment and training for 20 plus years. So we helped indigenous people find a job or go back to school or even start their own business. But after 20 years, I just didn't see a lot of difference in our communities. I mean, we had some people trained, but I didn't see a huge increase in employment. And I realized that a lot of the issue was the fact that people didn't believe that their future could be different. And that's what sparked the work I do, including what I'm about to share with you. So I call it, I've been delivering this in seminar for years, I call it the video game analogy. Uh, bottom line, if you can beat a video game, then you can win this game we call life. Now, I mentioned my previous career because in employment and training, we often talked about transferable skills. And what that means is a skill that you learn in one area is something that you can take and apply in another area. For example, if you can look after your home budget, well, then you have the skills to look after an office budget. It's just different numbers or maybe bigger numbers, but the skill set is the same. Now, I'm known as the master of metaphors. I always use metaphors to take an unknown and relate it to a known, and that's what this video game analogy is about. If you know how to play a video game, you can show your kids how they already have the skills to succeed at whatever they want to take on, whatever challenge they want to address and, and master. 
So here's the idea. Pretend we're playing a video game and it's one of those spooky castle kind of games. You're going to go in there and you got to find all the hidden treasures and the tools you're going to need. You got to stay away from the bad guys. And if you make it all the way to the end, you get this fantastic treasure. So that's the basic premise of this imaginary game we're about to play. So imagine you go into the main hallway of this, this spooky castle and there's a hallway with a bunch of doors. You go into the first door and you find a room and you check it out. There's no trap doors. There's no bad guys about to jump out. The only thing that is in the middle of this room on the floor is a golden key and it's sparkling. It's shining. One of those skeleton type keys that open absolutely everything. When I share this in seminar, I ask my participants, what do they do at this point? If you want to win the game, what do you do? And of course, they tell me they're going to pick up that key. And when I ask them why, they share that because they know there's going to be a locked door coming up. I guarantee you, if you come across a key in a video game, you can bet you're about to come up against a locked door at some point. What I share with them and what you need to share with your kids as they play the video games is the skills they just used to find that key is exactly the skills they need in life. For one, they were observant. They looked around in their environment to see what can help them. We need to teach our kids how to do that. And the reality is math class, history class, talking with an elder, watching this video, those are all keys that they can use later on. So we have to pick up those keys and put them in our backpack every chance we get. So that's the first room. You leave that room and now they go into the next door, into the next room, they check it out and there's absolutely nothing in this room. Nothing. Nothing good, nothing bad. There's nothing there. At this point, I ask the kids, what are they going to do? And of course, they leave. There's no benefit to staying in this room. But how often in life do we do that? We stay somewhere where there's absolutely no benefit. It's not bad, but it's not good. And just like our energy level runs out in the game, well, our energy and our life runs out as well. We can't afford to stay in those places that have no benefit to us. So that's the second room. Then the kids go back in the hallway, you're heading down the hallway and you come to the third room, but just as you come to the door, you hear all this noise and racket from the other side of the door and you realize there's people in there and they're fighting and you crack the door open a little bit and you can see people just like attacking each other and beating people up and I ask my participants, well, what do you do with this room? And of course, they're quick to tell me, you slam the door and you get away from there. Well, we got to do that in real life too. How often do we find ourselves in a room where there's just a whole bunch of bad stuff happening and we know we shouldn't be there, but for some reason we stay. We need to take the time to get out of that room. So, so on, on and on they go, opening doors and gathering tools and staying away from bad guys. But then I share with my participants, at some point, they're in the middle of the hallway and they run out of energy. And their person is just stuck there. So I ask them, if you want to win this game, what do you do? Well, it takes them about a half a second to tell me you start again. You start the next level. Well, think about that. If we remind our kids they already have this skill, if you fail at something, start again. Do it over and guess what? You're going to do better this time because you're going to know, don't bother going in door two because we know there's nothing in there. And race in door one and grab that key. There's nothing else in there. You can actually do it better because you failed, not worse. And the part that I absolutely love the most, and I get encouraged every single time I see our kids playing video games, is the fact that they know I have never met a kid whose goal, ultimate goal, was just to win one level. 
They want to beat the game. I can remember when my son used to play video games when he was a young man, and I told him, when you beat the game, I'll buy you a new one. Well, I had to change that after a while because he was beating them left, right, and center. That's a kid determined to succeed. This is not a negative. When I see a young man or woman playing a video game, sure, they might want to win this level, but their ultimate goal is to beat the game. Passing grade seven isn't the ultimate goal. It's to get to the end. And the best part is you watch these kids playing a video game, they know the next level is going to be harder. They know there's going to be even scarier challenges and bad guys there, and they're anxious to get there. Yet how often in real life are we scared to try something new because we don't know what's going to be there? They know it's going to be worse, and they still want to go for it. As I said in the beginning of this video, if our kids took the exact same skills that they used to win a video game and applied it to life, we wouldn't be worrying about our kids at all. So now I have a gift for you. If you would like a copy of the video game analogy to share with your classroom, with your kids, with your family, with your young parents, if your kids are now parents of your grandkids, all you got to do is send me an email. Send an email. Go to sandyboucher.com, so S-A-N-D-I-B-O-U-C-H-E-R.com. Use the contact me link and send me an email and just say, I want the video game analogy or I want that description of the video game. Just mention video game and I will send it to you for free. No strings attached whatsoever. So there you have it, guys. Quit. <laughs> we got to not come down on our kids for what they're doing, but help them understand how to take those skills and transfer it into day-to-day -day life. If they're winning a video game, then we have nothing to worry about. We just got to teach them how to use those skills. I hope that made sense to you. I'm looking forward to your email. Don't forget to send me an email so you can get the copy of the video game analogy. Until next Sunday, take care of yourself. Inspire those kids. And I'll talk to you soon. Love you. Bye-bye.